get up, get dressed, and leave you? <laughs> it was bad. It was bad, I'm telling you. There's not, that's why I say if you've got someone, fight it out. Because when somebody leaves you, your heart gets broken. Really, really bad. And they always say that, you know, they always say that women are more sensitive than men. That, that's so not true. All right, when a guy gets dumped or a guy breaks up with a chick, he is just for months, he's a mess. You ever see a chick when she gets dumped by a guy? Ooh, oh, there goes a hot guy. <laughs> they are trained to bounce back. God, I remember when I first, when I first got divorced, and it took about six months before I wanted to date again. And uh, in those days, they had personal ads. All right? It was before the internet. All right? Remember personal ads? And here's a personal ad I saw. Well, you read the craziest things people write. Here's a personal ad I saw. Whip me, beat me, dominate me. Please, no weirdos. <laughs> it doesn't work that way with women. You're smiling. The only thing that I know is that the most important thing to women is not sex. Now, I didn't say that women don't like sex. That's not what I said. I said it's not the most important thing to women. Women are better at prioritizing things. I think the most important thing, if you have a wife, if you have a girlfriend, gentlemen, is to make her laugh. Because when a woman laughs, it's one moment of the day we know they're not angry at us. <laughs> guys know this, women when they're angry, they clean. You come home, you have a clean house, you have one angry bitch on your hands. You see a sponge and an ass going back and forth, you better get flowers fast. I'm Jewish, I don't send flowers, I send seeds, they're cheaper. <laughs> Every guy come home. Be honest, ladies. We don't come home. How was your day? How did, did everything go well with your day? How was Every guy comes home the same way. My life sucks. <laughs> Every guy comes home the same way. I can't stand my boss. I hate this job. Every guy is one week away from turning into his father. <laughs> you think it won't happen? Your husband or boyfriend will be there. You won't be here tonight. He'll be home in the white boxer shorts down to his knees. <laughs> with the black knee lengths up to here. <laughs> Standing in front of the thermostat. Who touched this? <laughs> women are cooler than men, and I say it every night. Women are cooler than men, and I'll tell you why. Because women. When they laugh hard, they pee. <laughs> and then the cool part, instead of shutting up, they announce it to all the other women. I pee! I'm on your side. I'm a feminist. I'm wearing a pad right now. Oh, it's a heavy flow night. Uh, I can't believe we didn't have a legitimate woman running for president, and I really, really mean that. All right? I think it's about time we have a woman president. I think it's fantastic to have a woman president because women, women don't kill things. Do you understand that? Men are killers. Men have to kill stuff. Look, even when I said kill you, like, yeah, kill. <laughs> women are not killers. So if every country was headed by a woman, there would be no wars, and that would protect your sons and your daughters. If one country was headed by a woman and they wanted to start a war with the United States of America, who was headed by a woman president, they would pick up the phone and call her, and she would say, I'm not answering the phone. I'm not talking to that bitch. <laughs> Because a woman would never kill her enemy. A man has to kill his enemy. A woman keeps her around, <laughs> keeps her close, and tortures her. <laughs> what she does is she finds the one thing that woman doesn't like about herself, 
and she compliments her on it in a left-handed way. <laughs> Boy, I wish I was 20 pounds overweight like you. I would look better also. <laughs> Every woman from Brooklyn, New York, could be president of the United States. <laughs> because Brooklyn women are tough. You have to be tough to survive that borough of Brooklyn, all right? All right? You have to be tough, you have to be athletic, or you have to be funny. I was funny, and not by choice. I was a terrible athlete. Yeah, I broke my arm playing kickball. <laughs> I was eight years old. And I just wanted to impress the other kids. And I saw, you know that red ball they would roll into when it gets bigger and bigger? It looks like Raiders of the Lost Ark, that big ball there. And I ran it so fast, 95 miles an hour, and I kicked and I missed it. I went up in the air, and I came down and broke my arm. That's not the bad part. I went to the hospital. I had no underpants on. I had run out of underwear, and I didn't want to tell my mother. And my mother had to get on the phone and call my father. Can you imagine calling a guy at work and saying, all right, listen, it's not just that he's a bad athlete. He broke his arm playing kickball. Oh, what a schmuck. Can you come and please bring on your pants? <laughs> it was always like that with me. I wanted to be a fisherman, okay? And I lived in Brooklyn, New York. I lived in Flatbush. So my grandparents loved me so much, they brought me a fishing pole. And does anybody old enough to remember the show Flying Fisherman? Does anyone remember that show we got about Gladys? So I watched that show and I went out in my backyard. I didn't go in the water, folks. I went in my backyard. And I threw the lure out and I pulled it. And it came back. I threw the lure out and I pulled it. It came back. It was like two times beginner's luck. The third time I threw it, I pulled it. It was coming from my face. 95 miles an hour. And you know when you have that dream that you're back in like elementary school and you're in your underwear and you're trying to run out but your feet won't move. My feet would not move, they were cemented. And it was coming at me and I said, Steve, you have to move or otherwise you're going to be wearing an eye patch and a yarmulke. And I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> at the last second I turned away, it went into my cheek. I grabbed the pole, I went into the house. <laughs> and I said to my sister, Mindy, tell mommy come out and tell her, don't panic. <laughs> Can you imagine walking into the living room and you see this? I've got a fish hook with a line and a pole and I'm attached to it. My mother was in such a panic, she rushed me to the emergency room. She didn't cut the pole off my face. <laughs> I walked into the emergency room like this. Yes, hi, I caught myself. Yes, I'm I'm a big mouth schmuck, that's what I am, yes. Look at the big one I caught. I was a right fielder when I was eight years old. You know what that means when your kid's a right fielder? It ain't good, so what? Never get a chance, yeah, it means you suck. I remember once I ran out of the right field, I got my mitt. They were like, don't worry Marshall, you ain't gonna catch it anyway. Once a ball was hit to me, eight kids ran in a panic in front of me. That's how scared they were. It's true, absolutely true. I used to throw like this. Yeah, like a girl. That's what they said. I said, I know I did. My mother taught me. It was my father's fault. The fathers in those days, especially the Jewish dads 20, 30 years ago, they didn't do anything with you. It's not like the fathers today. You take the kid to little league practice, you take the daughter to soccer or to arts and crafts. I mean, my father did nothing with me. I don't even think my father knew my name. I called my father up on Father's Day. I said, hello, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. He said, hold on a second. I'll put your mother on the phone. <laughs> When my father died, I went running up to the coffin to pay my respects. And my mother came running up behind me and she said, Don't bother your father. He's resting. 